easy to read, it is enjoyable, and yeah, that's something that not all history books manage. Hello friends of Paperbound Knowledge Transfer. Welcome to another book review, another video on my channel. As some of you may know, we are coming up onto the 40th anniversary of the Falklands War in 1982, 2022. Now, if one looks at the internet for books on the Falklands War, um, it seems that everybody who went down south, and in addition some other people who didn't, wrote a book about their experience about the Falklands War. So there's a large number of them. Which is why I thought it might be helpful if I do a few book reviews and at some point a video titled What to read on the Falklands War. In which I would then yeah, recommend and shortly look at a few books and then point to individual book reviews like this one. And so I thought I'd start my book review series with this book. That is the Argent <laughs> sorry, Argentine Fight for the Falklands by Martin Middlebrook. This book was originally published in 1989, but I have a paperback version here from 2009. The author had previously written a book about the entire conflict shortly after it had ended, or relatively shortly after it had ended. This book is uh, kind of special in the English-speaking world, or for the English-speaking world, because it looks at the conflict from an Argentinian perspective. Nearly all the other books that I could find in English on the internet or in existence on that conflict are from the British, or tell the story from a British perspective. And yeah, because this book is special in that way, I thought it would be a good place to start this review series. As always, this video is going to be organized into several different chapters. And you can find those chapters as bookmarks in the description below or down here in the timeline. So you can see what part interests you the most, maybe. But now let us have a look at the book in question. Let us first look at the structure and the content of the book. For this book, Martin Middlebrook went to Argentina in 1987, when he was finally allowed to enter, when he finally got a visa by the Argentinian authorities, to conduct 62 different interviews of serving and former Argentinian military personnel. He was allowed to enter the country and, in that endeavor, he was supported by the Argentinian Navy and Army which meant he could talk to many officers and men of those services who had taken part in the fighting at the Falklands, or for the Falklands. Which, which, of course, back then was uh, quite fresh in everybody's mind, only five years or some five years having elapsed. In addition to the interviews he conducted himself, he also was allowed to use some excerpts, some quotes, from an Argentinian book which had been put together by an Argentinian Air Force officer on his experience and the experiences of some of his um, yeah, fellow Air Force pilots in the Falklands War. That book is Dios y los Halcones. Apparently, the Argentinian Air Force itself did not support Mr. Middlebrook in his endeavor and so he was not able to interview uh, many of their people. The information he used in the book, thus seems to have come mainly from what the Argentinians told him. Um, it doesn't seem like he had any great access to Argentinian military documents or anything like that. Or as far as I understand it, he was not given access to uh, at least many documents. Using the information that he got, he leads us to the entire conflict from start to finish from an Argentinian perspective. The story itself is then organized into 19 main chapters, starting at the start of 1982 with the plans of the Argentinian government for 1982 and for the Falklands, and ending with the homecoming of the beaten troops after the fall of Port Stanley. The chapters in between deal with such topics as the original um, landing by the Argentinians on the Falklands, Operation Blue or Azul, 
all the British landings at San Carlos and the Argentinian efforts to disrupt that landing. In all chapters, the story is being told by the author in a well-written and yeah, good storytelling manner. Dropped into the narrative are yeah, a whole big number of different quotes from his interviews and from the interviews out of the book Dios y los Halcones by an Argentinian naval officer, uh, sorry, Air Force officer that I've already mentioned. For me, those quotes are the strongest part of the book because they relate the human story to us on yeah, how it felt and how it was to fight for the Falklands as an Argentinian soldier or officer. The, or what I liked the most, or what was interesting the most for me, were the quotes uh, or stories by the Argentinian Air Force officers who flew against the British uh, bridgehead. And I particularly like the accounts by lower ranking Argentinian army soldiers because I think those men have been underrepresented in the coverage of the Falklands War for a long time. All in all, the book provides a very good overview about the entire conflict from an Argentinian perspective. The information in the text is supported by a number of maps and a few dedicated photo pages in the middle of the book, at least in my 2009 version of it. Let's now talk about the aspects of the book that I think are maybe positive and maybe a bit more negative. And starting with the negative points, the age of the book is definitely, or could at least be a negative point. Because in the intervening years since 1987 and 1989, yeah, there could have been some new developments in our understanding of what happened in the Falklands. And I don't know, there's no mention of it if uh, anything was changed in the 2009 edition of this. So yeah, it is at least, it is at least possible that there are some uh, things in there which we don't hold true anymore. Another point that kind of is you know, amalgamated with the first point is that he uh, based this book mainly on interviews and information that he was told by the Argentinians. And as we know from the Second World War, uh, reporting, especially by the higher ranking German officers, um, people don't always tell, tell the truth or maybe what they perceive to be the truth. And um, yeah, it would be better to have a book based on documents. Um, and so we always have to take what they say or what they gave him with a grain of salt, I think, given those historical, um, yeah, those historical uh, other events that I just mentioned. And I think it is a point that I don't like that he mainly talked, or seems to have mainly talked to officers. At least he mainly quotes officers in the book. Um, it can also be, so that this is not good because I think the grunts uh, should get more coverage because they do yeah, most of the fighting. And of course, he talked to them in 1987. That was only five years, in air quotes, only five years after the conflict. So many of those guys will still have been in service and they still had something to lose. So I don't think they were about to uh, drop anything too negative about their own performance or the performance of any of their superiors or the army and maybe whatever in general. So that could also, could also have been a problem. But now talking about the positive aspects that I found in this book. And the most positive aspect that is what I said already at the beginning. It is a book from a different perspective, at least for the English, uh, not speaking, but I am an English literate person that can read English. And from my perspective, from a British perspective, it is, I guess, interesting, I think, in my opinion, interesting to see the Argentinian perspective. It is also interesting to see the human perspective. And by the quotes, we get a lot of yeah, a better, closer connection to the Argentinian soldiers in the air and on the ground. And not least, this book is very well written. You can yeah, read a lot of it and it goes fast. It is easy to read. It is enjoyable. And yeah, that's something that not all history books manage. And now for my personal final verdict. In my view, this book is a fascinating look at a underrepresented or the underrepresented side of this conflict, the Argentinian side. 
at least for the English-speaking audience, very interesting. The book is not without its flaws, but still a great read. In addition, the age of the book means that there are many quite cheap editions of it out there on the market that you can get for a discount price. In short, I can absolutely recommend buying and reading this book. And now for my further reading recommendations on the same topic. All of these books I will also review in the future and then put the links to their reviews in the description below. The first one would be 100 Days by Sandy Woodward, I think it's uh, Admiral Sandy Woodward. He was the commander of the Naval Task Force that was sent down to the Falklands to yeah, begin the recapture of them. And that is his story, his side of the event. The next book that I would recommend is Amphibious Assault Falklands by Mike Clapp. I think Commodore Mike Clapp, um, either back then or today, I don't know. Oh, I don't remember, sorry. And he was the commander of the amphibious uh, force sent down sails to the Falklands to recapture them. And that is his story, his version of the events. Also quite interesting. And finally, no picnic. And who is missing? We already had the naval side and the amphibious side. Of course, one of the land force commanders. And No Picnic, written by Julian Thompson, also a prolific author on military topics, is his story on how he fought the Falklands War with the Third Commando Brigade, I think. Also a very interesting book, which I'll review in the future. Well, that's my opinion on this book. That uh, was my video for today. If you particularly liked my review or disliked my review, if you think there are other books that I should absolutely read, please leave me a comment in the description. I would be happy to read them and respond. And uh, up until then, have a nice day, have fun reading, goodbye.